Let's rock and roll, boys. Hello and welcome to another Nintendo podcast. My name is Austin and I'm joined today as ever by one Mr. Matthew. Hi, this is Matt. (laughs) And also returning guest, Jordan. Hello. Now, if you're a longtime listener, you might be asking yourself, why didn't Austin say the last names this time? It's because he doesn't know Jordan's (laughs) last name, but that's fine. (laughs) Um, The three of us are here today on another Nintendo podcast, the premier Nintendo podcast um, for mothers and um, accidental viewers on YouTube, to talk a little (laughs) bit about the latest in the Pokemon franchise. Now, Matt, you and I have chatted about this before. We've talked all about Dexit. And we've talked all about Pikachu. Um, And so as such, on November 15th, 2019, Pokemon Sword and Shield released for the Nintendo Switch. All three of us have been playing it. All three of us are in the fairly early stages. Uh, Spoiler, I'm the least far. (laughs) Um, But we want to kind of get in here, share our thoughts, address some of the complaints that have uh, appeared on the web. Complaint number one, Austin not playing games. Come on, man. (laughs) All right, here's another complaint. He's a fake gamer, and he says he did Ring Fit Adventure, but he doesn't look any thinner. The um, and I th- also just talk a little bit about the things we want to highlight and praise as things we've you know love maybe about the series, um, and also about this iteration in particular. So, uh, to kick us off, why don't we go around? Jordan, we'll start with you. Tell us where you are in the game. Um, I think I'm the furthest of the group. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Let's just insert that. <laughs> oh, this is the interlude music. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Play, play now. I think that was very clear from the music that you're making. (laughs) Um, (laughs) I am, uh, I think I'm the furthest of this group. I'm, um, I'm on route six. I've beaten, uh, Mm -hmm. three. That's the end uh, game. That's the end of the game. Um, (laughs) yes, I've, uh, I've beaten three gyms, um, and my Pokemon are all in there mid-30s level wise. Ooh. So you are playing Shield, correct? I am playing so, Shield, so yes. I thought the dog on the cover looked cooler, and that was the impetus for buying that. See, that's also game. why I chose Sword. I thought the Sword dog was cooler. Mm, well, you're Ron, objectively. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sorry. Factually, factually, Beard Dog is cooler than Dog Holding Sword, otherwise identical dogs. <laughs> um, Matt, why do you choose Sword? Uh, I, I thought swords were cooler than shields. I, <laughs> uh, I, I enjoy the sword shing or like, of like it being unsheathed the sound effect that it makes at the mm. start of the game. Uh, I don't know. Does yours make a, like, like when, when you watch the, uh, opening cut scene all the way through, does it make like a, I don't know, like a shield being like hit by something sound effect. It didn't, it like did a, not make a sound like that a was clunk, memorable clunk. enough that I could tell you what it was. And I have not watched the opening since the first time. So. Okay. Cause I, I noticed we'll go that. Ahead. I noticed that and I was wondering that sounded more like a sword than a shield. So I really wonder if there's a shield specific sound effect I'm missing out on. I'll listen for it next time. I'll listen for it. You can insert it. Just insert it as a podcast, right? Yeah, here. yeah, 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 yeah. Listener. These things are really easy for me to do. So let me just insert that here. Gris. Yeah. Um, and then also, uh, Matt, here's a question for you. Does a, But would a sword alone in a forest make a sound? You know what I mean? Doesn't a, Maybe a sword needs a shield to even make such a sound. Unless, of course, the swords like hit another sword. Yeah, but like big picture, sword, yeah. you know, maybe... One sound is not complete without the other instruments. You know what I mean? Yeah. This is actually a kind yeah. of a, a fun fact for any Pirates of the Caribbean fans out there. A lot of lot of black pearl yeah. heads out here. Yeah, let's, let's hear exactly. It. Um, uh, that movie is known for having some of the like worst continuity and stuff errors and a frequent error they make uh-huh. is that they use the like sword coming out of the sheath sound effect but when people just have their swords like tucked into like <laughs> their belt so it wouldn't make that noise and they like pull it out it's like shing and like it would not have made that sound just in case you want to watch closely next time 
Um, that is a yeah. Thing go that home. To that film. Fi- if it's not already fired up in your Blu-ray player, just go ahead and put Dead Man's Chest back on the TV. Great, <laughs> great flick. I can't even. What's World's End? Is that at, the third, or is World's that End. is that the Edgar yeah. Wright movie at, at World's End? And then. Uh, and then we have the one with the mermaid who gets legs so she can make love at the I end. I have none of them existed past. <laughs> Even two no is good. a tough sell for me. But the original, um, the original Many People Forget, Johnny Depp was nominated for his first Oscar for that film. Wow. But I would argue that Pirates both made and broke his career simultaneously. Mm-hmm. This is definitely the content that Nintendo Pirates podcast, everybody. In. <laughs> See you every week. But I think I could, I could make a spin off. Anyway, <laughs> swords. I love swords. It. Okay. Anyway, swords. <laughs> Any uh, so where am I in the game? Well, I was going to ask you, Jordan. So I'm at the I'm at the first jam, and it sounded like from some of the like the Game Informer news and other stuff that came out initially when it was in, uh, initially incorrectly translated um, was around like how many gyms there were and which mm-hmm. ones were in the minor leagues and which ones were in the majors, essentially, and like the order of which they were or what they would how they would shape up in in each game. So. You know, the very in the first scene, you know, you get through the wild area, you go to Spoka Doak City or whatever the heck it's called. Um, <laughs> yeah, you, you know, nailed it. Yeah, and uh, you know, you enter kind of the uh, opening ceremonies of the the games, essentially, like the you know the, the gym challenges are beginning. You get your number, which I also think is very cool. The the jerseys, you get to pick your favorite number, mm-hmm. and it shows up on the back of your jersey. And you can you can customize and get more jerseys or different types of jerseys as the game goes on. But your number stays the same. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if the lettering on the back, like the Pokemon lettering, changes for your name. Um, I was trying to I was trying to look that up earlier because my my name is Schultzy in the game, as it always has been since the dawn of blue. Um, and right. I didn't know if it like, if it had morphed that part either, but I like the, I like the numbers, but anyways, you, you know, so you're walking in and your number on your back is showing and they introduce the gym leaders, uh, based on like weakest to strongest, but like the, 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 the top gym leaders and they like, can, you know, one is missing apparently. Um, so you get to meet the other ones and they're in order and apparently that order changes. And I was wondering like what the first three gyms were for you. I had a, a the pretty traditional elements to start. I had grass, water, and then fire oh, okay. Um, okay. as my mm-hmm. first my first three gyms. Um, and I chose the fire starter, so I had like a very uh, initially pretty easy easy ride okay. through those. My first, then the air nation will be fire the was person. like fire was like fourth <laughs> for me. Um, the the fire gym leader. So. I think that's pretty interesting. No, now okay. So you had grass, water, and fire. What were your other gyms? Because um, I have a fairy. I have a fairy gym leader. I have a fairy as well, and what looks to be a ghost. I don't one have the ghost and one. a rock one. I have like a weird looking kid with like a ghost. Yeah, I don't. Mask. I've seen. Fairy. I've seen the artwork yeah. for him. Oh, that's that's just a normal yeah, team. Yeah, there. that's just what they <laughs> look like. That's oh, what they look like now. Uh, Post Fortnite, they're all looking like that. You guys know the like. The like rival person that's wearing like the purple puffy coat. I believe they're in both mm-hmm. versions of the game. Yeah. I yeah. definitely thought that was an old woman, and have learned that that's not. I think they're supposed to be a young teenage boy. It can be very hard, very hard to tell that apart because uh, older people can be short. Yeah. Um. <laughs> yes. I. I think that kind of leads me to my my first thought about this game. So something I've liked a lot about it uh, in general, also coming off of Sun and Moon, is that. The theming is really strong. I really like the UK theme, just like uh, the Hawaii in, theme it's in for the Lola the, region. Know, the, um, just just the, the language that's being used in the game. You know, there's a, tellies. Everything's mom. a telly. And yeah. Mom. Yeah. There's words right. I have, I've had to look Going up. on holiday. Like, what the? <laughs> what is this? What's all, what's all this <laughs> crumpet? <laughs> the, um, I do think that overall, um, I like that. It's consistent. X and Y had like a vaguely like uh, French theme and it just wasn't. I did never felt like it was very uh, cohesive feeling, and they've drilled down on that, and I think that's a lot of fun. And I appreciate the presence of the supporting characters in the game. You do have, like, the central cast, and I think it's hard to, like, kind of lose track of them in a good and bad way. So in a good way, I think it keeps things moving. It's really clearly established with Leon and Hop. <clears throat> I uh, messed up his name during the original recording, and I'm fixing it now, so I seem very smart. Thank you. 
of what the setup is for your you know hero and how they're introduced to the world of pokemon um in a you know believable enough way i think a negative to that though is you just you and this is true of sun and moon also there's an element of like you're kind of because your character is a silent protagonist you are almost living like as a bystander to their story you're not you know your character doesn't vocalize anything to you know affect the story um all the characters around you constantly are and in the case of hop you're just following him from path to path at least for a lot of the intro um and i i like having the characters i i wish they would either let you out on your own a little more or make your character a little more uh compelling on their own right like it it would be fun to have your character be like you saying things to the effect of um you know that you have this rivalry against an older sibling or you really want to you know beat them or you know prove prove something of yourself versus like observing the sibling rivalry um as a kind of a, a bystander yeah I, I would super agree with that i found the beginning of the game to be like annoyingly handholdy to the point where i was like oh hop again like i really very much I'm he's like always it. barely yeah. down the hill yeah um i will say at the point i'm at in the game they have introduced like a sort of interesting turn in the hop storyline that i hope continues so i'm hopeful that 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 aspect will get better but i found at it at the very least you're hopeful <laughs> yeah i'm hopeful mm-hmm. <laughs> i think we can just <laughs> yeah, end the done. podcast right there and thank you for tuning in to learn it's not getting any better than that thank you for tuning in <laughs> i yeah it's handholdy i think that's so, you know, and I'm something we want to address on the podcast is kind of taking a look at the things people have been very vocal about online and coming up with their own opinions on it, too. And I think that the single biggest thing for me is um, I wish that it were it let you loose a little more and a little faster because that I think a lot of people went into this game with expectations that weren't realistic, that it was going to be something more akin to Breath of the Wild. Not that that was ever you know, promise, but we saw images of the wild area and heard the music and felt like it invoked, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, those themes, but um, it definitely is traditional feeling. Um, it's probably a little less handholdy than, than Sun and Moon, which had your Pokedex, the Rodham decks constantly was telling you, like pinpointing on the map exactly where to walk on very yeah. linear routes. Um, so it's maybe a step improved from that, but very um, minimally, I feel. I and- also the voice acting i wish like that opening scene sorry really fast when it, the game starts and it's the the big stadium and the guy comes out and he's like well the world pokemon isn't a great we all have monsters and they you know they are our partners and isn't that awesome like let's play some pokemon and um, it falls a little flat the, without to have that character the voice acting you're just like it's really flat it's very very flat you know, it, i was just moving his lips yeah, it, it should like, have at this even point like, even, you know there's no like not that we needed animalese or anything like that. Text tone or something. Or just like a... Oh, yeah, oh, any, oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's none of that like kind of thing which would benefit it to just some noise. That, it, especially it for a game that you, you can play on your TV like that. It just it seems like budgety, you know? I don't know. And that that was, that was my, right. kind of my first gripe because my friend was here as I started it. And, you know, he's, he's kind of like on the fence about Pokemon... Um, but like wanted to see what it was going to look like and boom right off the bat he's like wow that sucks <laughs> like you know this huge stadium you can hear like a, <laughs> a like a, a very vague like chanty noise in the background and it's really pumping you up and then yeah. it's, and then it's that and you're like ah oh, dang even like mm-hmm. even um yeah i think leo's even, like yeah, even like in, signature charizard move has a sound effect to it you know and he throws his fingers in the air and like mm-hmm. shing or whatever but like there's i don't know i wish that there was was yeah. more I, th- I think even like a compromise that you see a lot in Fire Emblem when a character will say something that kind of uh, just is indicative of the tone of the rest of their text. So they'll say something like, you know, this battle is mine. And but the text will read like, you know, we're definitely going to win this fight. Let's all work together as a team kind of thing. But you get the idea, like a little flavor uh, dialogue there would benefit it. Like even if it weren't one for one reading every single line, just having characters occasionally, yeah, you know, speak. Mm-hmm. yeah i agree um yeah so that's kind of an initial initial impression but let's talk um a little more about some of our other thoughts so i think in the in the height of dexit and the concerns about the the models and all those those aspects that's i think something people are not talking about which i'm very impressed with is the um the non-random encounter yeah, seeing pokemon awesome. 
on the map uh being able to have some and i'm i've been very impressed by that like i know matt you and i talked about with let's go that it did that but i think we felt like it was probably a spinoff that was closer to pokemon go like you know it it didn't feel like that was going to be a permanent thing and of course it did become one and i yeah can't um overstate how in how much i enjoy that like it's been fun to beeline it for it's been terrifying to run away from pokemon that are chasing you and that for me that like you can't just leave your game idle like if you especially if you're in the wild area like you you gotta pause it or even just like in the grass they're gonna run out of the grass to come sometimes they stop because they're kind of like just looking at you and they'll get a little bit closer but in the wild area i was shocked that like they were running after me some of them and some of them are faster than my character's running speed. So, yeah. Yeah, it feels yeah. dangerous in a fun way. Yeah, there was a, a moment where I um, like got to enter a new part of the wild area, and there were basically like stampedes of like dreadnoughts about. And I, it felt so cool. Like It, it felt really uh, real and immersive. I will say I'm yeah, loving that. That's how that. Mufasa dies, <laughs> iconically. Um, I, I, I'm loving that, but I, I have been disappointed by the... Um, level cap yeah. um for catching pokemon i've found that to be incredibly frustrating because i'll be like oh my god like it's a snorlax and then it'll be one level higher than i'm allowed to catch and i have to either run away or like try and kill it which is disappointing to me like i wish that it yeah in the vein of Let like you the try to catch it. i would much rather be able waste, to like waste 15 it, pokeballs um, but still the, get it yeah like oh i just missed it or i yeah um uh then have the game just tell me it's not even an option i've found that to be like to the point where I'm like, ugh, I just won't even bother going after this Pokemon because it's just going to kill my entire party, and I don't even have a chance to even potentially eke out a win. I feel like some of the magic is lost for me a little bit there. Yeah, I think that's totally fair. I I think something I really like about this game is in the wild area, it feels dangerous. Like you feel like I've been you know wanting to use my campsite, heal up my Pokemon, or go back to someone who can heal me, and um. You know, I'll take on a counter to try to catch Pokemon that's just a little above my level, and those have been tense, and I've blown through multiple Pokemon, and I've really liked that. That Pokemon has not been challenging in a long time in the games. It was cool for black and white back in the day. There was a difficulty uh, setting uh, option, if, but there was an asterisk to that. Generally speaking, the games have been pretty easy, and I like the wild area. You know, I want to venture in and see the Pokemon that are there. Um, you know, the game, of course, infamously, I guess, but has 400 Pokemon in it, which is still a lot of Pokemon. And the um, the way in which those are mixed and yeah. matched in the wild area is exciting. Like, I'm not really, you know, the little biome of this patch of grass has these, this Pokemon and now I'm back in wild area. And it's different. That's really cool and really has a good exploration feeling going to the, the raids and not necessarily knowing what that Pokemon's going to be is exciting and really cool. Um, so it has that danger and exploration that i think is, is and I, really... yeah i think if you're coming from like myself and jordan like uh, coming from not having played uh the alola region or even the last like two or three generations i mean i the last game i played was x and y and and then before that black and white and nothing but between that nothing after that there are so many Pokemon that are fresh to me and new to me. And I'm like, I have no idea whether it's uh, a, a lowland Pokemon or lowland, um, you know, a, 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 the Gala region, right? Or not. Um, Learn, yeah. And it's been really, it's been really nice for me to actually check the Pokedex and read about all of these different types of Pokemon. And I'm excited about all of them because yeah. they're still fresh. And even though I think I've gotten to know some of them through playing Pokemon Go, um, which is which has also been helpful, um, just in terms of like recognizing types and stuff like that. I mm-hmm. that to me has been really exciting, and then seeing them all in the open world, and I was not expecting them to see just see them in the grass at all um, outside of that that you know camera yeah. free region. Um, so that's been really cool. I think for me, the, the my favorite part of the game is just this the way they set up the 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 the, the gym challenges as these you know it's, it's very much like akin to watching a soccer match and having these favorite teams, you know, and I love the the yeah. whole uniform mm-hmm. setup and the fans. And I, I also like that there's like this, you know, um, meta dialogue around, you know, team yell being like angry Pokemon fans, uh, as, uh, and I don't yeah, know, I, I, like that, that, that kind of stuff I've, I've really enjoyed. I don't know how much it's going to show up in the story. Um, I don't know. I you know I, I'm still curious to see how Team Yell shows up for this particular 
you you there's like a there's a couple of rivals you meet right in the beginning. You know, a couple of cocky dudes. Aside from you know you, you know your main rival, you have like who's the gentleman in like all green? You, like you meet him in like right when you walk into the um right why when you walk into like the check in for the like opening ceremonies you meet him and he's like eh, like I'm gonna win you suck or something like that or like I'm endorsed by the chancellor or oh yeah that's right you know, the chair of the of the league um, and he's like oh you're the one that's endorsed by you know uh, yeah. and then two there's Team Yell's favorite fan um, with the, you know, the the female trainer that they're all training for. And I'm like, wow, right off the bat, you have these three other trainers who are going through the league with you. Um, and I'm excited to see how that story plays out. Yeah, I, uh, that, that is cool. And I, X and Y was really the first one, in, in my, from my opinion, to really experiment more so with the rivals. So kind of from the outset of that game, you meet a, a bunch of other children. And um, each one has kind of their somewhat tropish but a distinct personality that you kind of gain a sense of what type of trainer they're going to be and then each one kind of was like oh i want to be like a breeder or i want to be a nutritionist things like that and uh um i think this it is fun with this the the rivals do seem a little more competitive and i think having it based around a sporting event kind of generates that uh mood better than because really since silver the rivals have been nicer and nicer for the most part like and they didn't really feel as much like rivals like in um in silver there's the the guy steals uh the 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 pokemon that counters yours and of course gary from the original is iconic and smelling you later all the time and so it's fun though because you do have the sense of like i want to you know crush this guy or or what (laughs) have you um and i think this does a little bit better job kind of amping that up i do though um i also wish i could name hop something else some, some, wanna, something naughty like, i want i want to be able to name the, my rival <laughs> yes, totally. but i um yeah i feel like with i would love to see though again more ownership of the character story in a future game like it would be fun if your character could make some type of decisions like fire emblem i think nintendo in general seems very apprehensive to like ascribe any like distinct personality to any of their heroes right so like mario is can, you know, kind of a always has the same mascot personality. Um, but like, of course, in the Legend of Zelda, Link is totally silent, even though everyone else talks in Breath of the Wild. And in the case of uh, Fire Emblem, the hero, your hero makes decisions, but doesn't really speak and still is a bit of a blank slate. But still, the decision making aspect is interesting. And I think it would be fun to have a char- mo- a little more of a character. Something another game I've been enjoying a lot this summer um, is Pokemon masters and as it came out in august and now even in the fall i'm still playing it all the time and something it does really really well um is that it gives a real personality to all these trainers now some of the trainers are gym leader trainers or elite four trainers from the various games but a lot of the characters are just the you know starting characters um so that whatever the appearance of the you know protagonist male or female protagonist from their respective game um a lot of you know they make they make up a lot of the roster and they all have their own personality and it's really fun because you get a sense of like oh um rosa for example she has uh the her her evolution line like you start to notice like her character is enthusiastic in a way that some of the other heroes are more like apprehensive or more like um you know, bookish or it it gives a personality to characters that otherwise were silent in the other games. It would be fun to have the next game have a protagonist that has more of a chance for you to do something uh, and to really affect the story. Yeah, definitely. That'd be awesome. I was going to, um, I was going to ask Jordan, like what, uh, I mean, both of you, but I mean, Jordan, at this point you've played through three gyms. Who's on your team? Who have you swapped out? Um, you know, what, what, what Pokemon are you excited about? And is there any evolutions that you're like, oh, this is really, this was really cool. I wasn't expecting this. Yeah, good question. Um, also for context, the only other Pokemon game I've played is Leaf Green. Um, I grew up a, a, um, a big fan of the, the show and a big fan of the card game. So like my heart is with the original, um, Pokemon and then all the Pokemon past that are completely new to me. Um, so I, I similarly don't know like who's actually new this time and who is from Gen 3 or whatever. Um, I started out with uh, the Gore Bunny uh, starter, so the fire starter. I actually recently wow, dumped them. That's a big choice to get rid of the starter. Relic that I evolved um, on my team. Um, 
Yeah, I, I was apprehensive to do it, but I I yeah. evolved them all the way to their like final evolution and didn't love them. Agreed. Um, for me, the look of the Pokemon is like an important fa- like they so have to be a useful Pokemon with a great move set, but the look is also pretty key and the adorable score yeah. bunny evolves into like a soccer playing it, no, it's not giant that good. bunny and I just wasn't I wasn't feeling it. I would much rather have uh, uh an Arcanine. So um uh so I, I've got my fire type. Um, I, uh, I've got a Quagsire who I love. Um, water type on my nice. team. Um, got a Leafeon for my grass type. Um, the other ones have kind of been changing in and out. I recently got an Onyx, uh, which yeah. I'm super pumped about. Yeah, I do Onyx like that. Like cool. True life size giant Onyx um, out, out in the wild area. So um, I was super super thrilled to get them. Side sidebar, did, were you surprised at how sh- like small Charizard was initially next to Leo? And we, right when you start the, he is the game, he's pretty small. That's a good point. Yeah, I mean, he's not any. I don't think he's any smaller than my body pillow I have of him, but he is on the smaller side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that I was like, oh, okay, maybe he just like stunted his growth. I don't know, worked him too hard. But anyways, continue. Oh, that's sorry. okay. I'm not um, sorry for my body I, <laughs> <laughs> um uh, i've got a i've got a yamper and i evolved him to mm-hmm. uh a, a bolton which is his um final form and he's pretty cute but i would dump him in a second if i found a pikachu <laughs> and i have not found a pikachu that's awesome i'm very sad <laughs> which is the first that's the first pokemon oh, i saw no way i don't know about shield. you but I'm so when sad. i entered the wild area when i entered it it was storming and it was very breath of the wild like this it was very mm-hmm. like static electric yeah. like scene and it you know the every battle was like that's awesome. was kind of like the the, the ah, condition of the, of the that's field so cool. and so there was all these electric pokemon around and i just saw one pikachu just kind of wilding back and forth and i'm like oh I, my yeah. god i think the like the gigantamaxing is cool i wish more pokemon had exclusive forms in the same way that mega evolutions and things predated it and i think like pikachu's is really great looking love that retro chubby pikachu I think more of those specific Gigantamaxes uh, versus just the Dynamax, the more general, like just, you know, your Pokemon gets Power Rangered up to a large form. I am. Um, yeah. I, that's a, that is a cool encounter, Matt. And I think that like the, that is something that really works for the wild area um, is that feeling of like, while wow, there is something in the distance or, or also conversely, when the tall grass is so tall that you can't see a smaller Pokemon and you kind of stumble into them or I'm like kind of moving the camera and like, what is yes, this? That, I also awesome. really like that. It's uh, much more exciting. And because it's not random, you feel the sense of control in like choosing what to fight, which I think in a byproduct that I haven't really heard many people talk about, but in let's go, uh, which I did manage to finish for the switch, but um you know that that game had those encounters on the on the map, and something about that that was fun was I got to areas where I was like I don't want to encounter another Zubat, and I would you know kind of run through let's say a cave that was kind of dragging on, but the byproduct that was I thought really a nice bonus was that because I was not fighting those random encounters random quote unquote I was m- maybe a little under leveled when I would come across the gyms or the trainers uh, later. And so that kept it challenging and interesting because I had chosen to give up an opportunity to fight like just more random enemies. And um, I like that aspect of it too. You know, seeing things and choosing to avoid them also means you're going to be weaker, which will make the game more rewarding and challenging. Um, I think it really goes a long way yeah. for the balance. And I think it's a really big deal for this game that really, again, for an annualized franchise, really, I think is worth celebrating because it works really well the first time i found a pokemon that was not in tall grass just walking around not in the wild area but just on the more standard routes um and it wasn't in tall grass i was like whoa like you know totally broke the confines of where i thought it was like safe or could walk around or what was like the area to encounter pokemon i thought that was cool like to find a yamper that was in the middle i was like is there something special about this and there wasn't but still the feeling (laughs) of like you know they're not just in this little patch like they're living somewhat in this um, area, linear as it may be. Um, it's a big, it is a big deal. And I think that is like really like the obvious strong set. The wild area is very cool. Um, I think there's things we can talk about here in a moment, ways I would like to see it change and improve. But um, it's, yeah, it's a, it's the biggest yeah, shift I can think of Pokemon like, having ever. Wish, wish list is big. What would it, so you got sword and shield. What would the next one, what would the middle one be? Like helmet? I think or, the series has taught us like it's going to be sword two, shield two, or something very lame sounding like that. Yeah. <laughs> ultra, ultra sword, ultra shield. In terms of like the overall length of the game, 
Like I know that there's, I feel like some people feel like they're just breezing through it and it's easy. And you have the article about the, the woo-woo going through and yeah. uh, the person. Which has always been a thing. People have always, you know, finished. Pokemon right. That, but yeah. Um, how do you two play Pokemon games? Are you playing it for the story? Do you have a big after game? Are you like, like, like play through? Do any, are, are you, either of you looking forward to the, some of the raid battle mechanics, uh, where, you know, like the three of us teaming up to take on, uh, you know, some sort of a Pokemon. Cause if you've noticed on your switch, it'll start saying like raid event or something. It'll, you know, you'll see it kind of in the news. Like yeah, a section of the Switch, yeah. mm-hmm. like that maybe something specifically is going on. Go to the wild area and check it out. I haven't done that with with folks yet, but anyways, what is? How do you typically play Pokemon games, and is that a feature you're excited about that you think will up the longevity of it for you? I I found the game super easy so far, and I'm like finally at a point now where I feel like I'm at the right level where things are just challenging and not too frustrating, but not too simple either. Um, so that's exciting to me. Um, I. Yeah, so far because everything has felt new to me, I'm in it for exploring. I'm not expecting too much out of the story, so I hope that there's a lot more going on outside of the story. That's why I like the wild area. I feel like there's so many corners of that that I haven't even tapped into yet that I feel like I have the opportunity to spend a lot of time there if I want to pause from the main story or if I get through all of the gyms and then I want to go back and spend a lot more time there. I haven't really engaged with any of the camping or like many of the raid mechanics yet. So curry decks. um, I found the raid. Yeah, I haven't done anything with that. Yeah, yeah. I um, I really like the wild area. I feel like it's challenging. I like, you know, it's kind of what you make of those areas too. Like, you know, you can go in and with the type, you can always you know win a battle if you know the type effective chart. But if you want to, you know, catch something that maybe is slightly above your level, I agree with you, Jordan. Though I think the cap is um, not worth. Yeah, I think that's a negative to have it be to have Pokemon yeah. locked out of being able to catch because. Yeah. Um, you kind of it's like oh this pokemon's four levels above me it's still catchable but it feels a little arbitrary that one higher might not be um but still that thrill is there i i and also it's wild area you're more on your own and you can get you know you can be encountered by all types of pokemon and that is exciting too um so i've yeah liked those things i uh i feel that once i finish the story um the thing that would make me most interested in playing would be having events like uh, we've talked about it a bit, Jordan, on the podcast that, like, I've been very into Pokemon Go and I played a huge amount of it, especially this this summer and even you know now. And uh, my girlfriend and I play, and a bunch of my friends here in town play, and it's been awesome. And um, I would not have expected the rating particularly to be so exciting and engaging and looking forward to the events and making my team of counters and all those aspects. If they, I hope that it they choose to put special raids in for pokemon maybe that were not in the game i know that is not what they've said they're going to do so this is really a a pipe dream um but how cool would it be to have like a pokemon that was cut say blast choice or something appear as you know a two week long raid event or something along those lines and people are like oh i gotta play you know i have to get blast choice and then at least he could be unlocked within the game and then people could still trade it in if they miss the event or whatever like i know that is not their plan again but i think that would be such a cool idea because i as i understand it right now the end game is pretty limited there isn't like a large battle tower like an emerald um it's just you know catching them all my favorite thing to do with pokemon is just catching them and so i um that and i think the one other strength about the game and this will kind of close up my thoughts but the something i think this game does well and as someone who's beaten every mainline pokemon game it it's getting the ui down better than they have in recent iterations like the ai or the ui excuse me is it's colorful and it's poppy but it's not so over the top the rodham decks in the past games chatted all the time and there were there were a lot of different menus and options and like uh, wireless portals the wireless is not really handled super elegantly in this but it's not as bad as it's been and it is a step in the right direction i also think being able to see those features from let's go like accessing your pc um on on the go or mo- how you move pokemon in and out of your party is way more elegant mm-hmm. in this um and i yeah. like that even playing with pokemon at a campsite although it was cool in, in uh, sun and moon you could really interact with all your pokemon and uh, animate and pet them and brush them and things and that was honestly super cool and it would be great to see that type of feature return in a future game but 
even still, I appreciate the consolidated way you can play with them at the campsite feels like organic without being too in the weeds. I, I think the Pokemon games are just going to have to have a little bit of a wrecking. I think that a lot of the tension around this game is that big picture people have just high expectations. And um, I think Pokemon has been a series that's been very slow to iterate, much more so than Mario and Zelda, um, especially. And the I feel that people are now at a certain age and the internet culture is like vocal enough that there was, you know, a snowballing of people expressing that they're, you know, some of which are valid complaints for ways in which the series has not grown, just amplified by kind of internet culture yeah. and kind of those expectations of a bit of a tipping point. Yeah, other aging fan base that other franchises. Yeah, does, but I think it would have to be a trade off of Game Freak taking more time to make the game. Which means you know they're and they're missing out on a year's worth of sales, you know, just for the sake of the, uh, you know, kind of catering to this group, and I, it's almost an impossible group to please on all fronts. So I think the obvious things become like including all of the Pokemon. Let's say uh, do it. Let's go but, for you know silver, uh, and silver yeah. and gold this coming year, and keep their you know mainline Pokemon team working on the next iteration of a, uh, you know where we're at now with like an you know. Not I think they'll just need more time. Yeah. If you'll want all of those, like, you know, people were upset with the Game Freak Lied thing about the fact that the models, the the wireframes were the same. But right. that's not the same thing as implementing all those characters into the game and balancing the characters and factoring in abilities that are not in the game or move sets that might not be in the game or the it, just for the visuals, all the poke, like, the game visually is a little bit of a mixed bag. The but the models look really good. Like the lighting and texture work on the Pokemon is is awesome. The yeah. l- the lighting and texture work on the environments is pretty poor, especially glaringly so in the wild area. Especially glaringly so on the berry tree, which is like the worst looking, <laughs> like st- sore thumb in that yeah um, <laughs> environment. But like the, those environments look really shabby. But the Pokemon themselves look good, and the lighting's good, and animations fine like um have you fished for a pokemon yet because like i like i was in i was in the, the first have. city and like there was a little you know the bubbling yep. spot and i fish for it and then you're like wait a minute i was sitting on like a bricks like cement dock and like overlooking yeah. like a smudgy like river going through a city and now yeah. i'm like suddenly battling this magic harp in like the forest like in the like the wilderness <laughs> like right all the, and, and that kind of took that sometimes will take me out of it um yeah, and that's you know it's a little hard, and I think some of those things are just made more glaring by its HD. The game is at a high resolution; it runs at a much higher resolution than like Breath of the Wild yeah. per se, but it does not look nearly as good. It's not nearly as detailed. What would be your optimum number of Pokemon in the game? Because it, from my perspective, which I know is a limited one, no, I understand why people are disappointed that all the Pokemon enter the game. However, with four hundred or whatever yeah. Pokemon, I find that to be it's a huge so number. So many. That I feel like I can never catch them all. I can't keep track of them. And they're like, you know, X person is going to send out an XYZ Pokemon. Right. I'm like, I have no idea what type that is. <laughs> right. And I feel like I will have a hard time, like, remembering what, like, um, and so I am, like, so torn. And I, like, understand the challenge of trying to address this problem. Like, how do you make sure everyone's favorite Pokemon is included? But also, there are so many at this point that I'm like, ugh, I'm never going to catch all of them. Like, yeah. if I don't like the look or the abilities of a Pokemon, I'm not even going to bother wasting Pokeballs on it. Yeah. Um, what would be, like, a better number of them? Yeah, if, that's a great question. If anything, it, yeah, it's really well put. And I, I think that 400 is a huge number of Pokemon in this game. And you can, ev- this game is everything all the po- core Pokemon games have done, and it does them better. There are exceptions where games were, like, maybe had like gold and silver had more gems and things of that nature. However, like this game is, I think the refinement in many ways and the way you encounter Pokemon is awesome. Like those things are all positive. I think it's more the feeling that Pokemon cannot make it in that you already have, or that you might move like when Pokemon home launches next year and I move Pokemon from Pokemon go or let's go or my 3ds games into this platform that I cannot then take them. It just into switch. Mm-hmm. I think if anything, it represents a bigger fear where it's like, if let's say I really love, um, you know, uh, one of the Pokemon in this game and I want to bring it into a future one, it's a feeling of like, maybe I won't be able to. I think that's like just the daunting idea that not so much that it won't be in that game, but it's like, it can't be traded into it. Um, mm. So I, 
I think Game Freak would be wise to implement something that was even just like, like I mentioned with the raids and just roll out Pokemon very slowly and make it an event because games as a service are bigger than ever. And also it would just feel like the story was still being written on this game. Like, and uh, that there's always a chance. And then when a Pokemon gets rolled out, let's say it's one that was cut that we, we don't, you know, necessarily care a ton about. Okay. So let's say it's even, um, nose pass for example like if nose pass is brought back to the game though all of a sudden and it's in a raid that might be exciting people might start talking about like let's do that nose pass raid and that's something i've really liked about mm. pokemon go like pokemon go now we have the uh, pokemon that are from black and white but they roll them out like in very small sets of a few pokemon at a time and but then it becomes like really exciting for these pokemon that i really didn't care at all about and now all of a sudden i'm like oh I really want Litwick super badly. It's really competitive in Pokemon Go. It's r- relatively rare to encounter. You need a lot of these materials to evolve it. Like now I'm totally love that Litwick evolution line. You could, but I wouldn't have, except for the way that they've piecemeal rolled it out and kept that service mm-hmm. going mm-hmm. in Go. And I think that would be really wise for them uh, to just slowly, in the same way that right now there's an app on the phone called uh, Poke- Poke Pass and, um, if you go into like a target, there'll be like mission. And it's like, you go into target and you scan a thing and you get either things for this very basic app or sometimes like digital codes for the games. So like you can scan at GameStop currently and get like a, a shiny version of one of the legendaries from sun and moon for the three DS game and implementing some, those things roll out and they've been doing this type of thing for years and Mm -hmm. doing something like that with this, where there's a Pokemon that's being added to the game slowly. I think people would feel a sense of like, okay, everything is going to be, there um because i think pokemon's never going to it's never going to be as hardcore as people the people really want it to be in certain respects but i think the more um the more it can kind of to fine tune it's like uh competitive and pve elements i think it'll appeal to people even if the rest of it is like for all ages if there's interesting raid battles for instance i think that's a big opportunity to have people and kids are great at games too. Like, you know, be like, oh, I really want the counters. I really want this or that for, and I want to meet up with my three friends or organize this thing. We're going to take down this guy. Like, do you guys all have your one special Pokemon? Who's going to Dynamax win? Like that, that leaves a lot of potential for those players. And then at the very least that Pokemon is added to the decks of the game. So that if somebody right. else got an extra Blastoise, they could trade it in and you know, it would work. Um, I think that would be a, some it could really benefit the game because i think a lot of the other stuff you know having a breath of the wild style game or something with that visual fidelity Mm -hmm. or what have you i we're not going to get it unless i think game free took a long it would it'd be out of their comfort zone and it would take a long time i i think the 400 is fine um i was in i had an interesting conversation this evening where i met up with some friends at an event there were some children there and there was four of us like millennials talking about Pokemon. Like, and we were talking, mm-hmm. the kid was like, are you talking about Pokemon? And we're like, yeah. And he's like, like, I have no he's idea what you're like, words. what characters you're talking about or he any, yeah. and, then, and he had no idea of like, w- w- I don't, he didn't have any kind of concept of what sword and shield were. And he was, he was old enough to, you know, be playing switch and playing games. He was on an iPad playing something. Um, and, you know, that was kind of like Pokemon's like core demographic. And it's, I mean, it was just kind of like, a, oh, yeah, this is like who the Pokemon fan base has grown up to be. And, and you know, yes, Switch owners are very diverse. There's a, you know, and I think Game Freak realizes that they're going to be selling the majority of their games to the silent majority of people who aren't complaining about this game and the number of Pokemon that are in it and will buy iterations of it no matter what. Um, and that's the, that's the thing that kind of gets me down is, is that despite kind of some of the toxic nature of the internet culture today and, and a lot of the backlash the company has gotten, like you do want to see improvements made. And I would love, I mean, this is a whole new chapter of Pokemon being on a console, um, yeah. you know, and, and the art direction and the open world and some of those concepts are, are, are really cool, but you would love to see them taken even further and, it saddens me to think that they'll just kind of continue to make marginal updates, but the story will always remain very bland and the characters won't really have great arcs and the, you know, the um, yeah. rivals will always be really cheeky and 
I don't know. And then, and, and all at the end of the day, like that's what I think. Like my friend who was sitting here watching the game was annoyed about it because he's like, it's just I feel like it's just a big gripe with Animal Crossing was like I feel like I'm sitting, buying the same furniture over and over every like couple of mm-hmm. generations, and mm. just the, the graphics look different. <laughs> And yeah, right. And I think there needs to be kind of a wild world slash, you know, um, you know, new leaf era, um, like paradigm shift in Pokemon, which I don't know what that is, if it's already happened and we're like in fate, like, you know, like, I don't know what that looks like, but yeah, I, it hasn't. I, yeah, I think you're right. I also feel like it's never going to change. It's never going to be what everybody, everybody has their own idea of what they want to be. But I think that super hardcore, you know, game that's very personal and long single player like just not right. going to exist that's just not fundamentally what these games are even though it would be cool for sure but it's like that isn't what this development team has been working on that's not frequency at which people want this content like um and i would i think they can make small tweaks and get much closer and i think a lot of that could just be opening it up as a service and really trying to you know, the next game, let's cut some of the handholdy stuff, like, oh, and let's get into the wild area more immediately, and let's try and really make that wild area shine. Do you, you have know, to be a kid? Game, like, do you have to be ten years old or twelve years old setting out? Like, do you? I have think a lot of people always have a mom. I don't think so. You leave in your, you know, because it's like, yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly. I don't think you need that same setup of it's always just a, a mother and uh, Bye, doing good work on her own. Childhood bedroom. Uh, <laughs> next mom. The um, but the I feel. Yeah, you could totally mix up the setup, or at the very least, get that person out the door much more quickly and have the whole area interesting and explorable, like the wild area. Or, you know, um, you could really and then focus in on the cool cooperative and competitive stuff they are touching on now. You know, make cool tournaments, make cool events. Like, um, I think the formula with this game is really actually strong, and I actually like the balance of the routes and the wild areas. Like, the routes give you the narrative. I do wish the narrative were a little more inventive, um, but they give you that linear thing, and then you have the open thing. And I yeah. think really building out the open thing, mm-hmm. visually and event wise, could be a really positive, yeah. you know, future for this. Series. I will say to the game's credit, I feel like I have to grind a lot less than I yeah. had to in Agreed. in the last game. Like the way that they split up the XP that you get yeah. and the XP candy that you get, so Huge. then you have the option of like who do I want to give this to? Or if I get a new Pokemon in my party, I can just level right. them to, to match up to my current um, Pokemon. Yeah. I don't have to always be playing people I don't like out front so they get the XP. Right. Um, that's been a huge quality of life yeah. um, improvement. So I agree if they can make even more tweaks like that, I think that makes a huge difference in how yeah. how like bree- breezy the game can feel. Agreed. A lot of people like kind of scoffed at the fact that EXP share is shared amongst all that can't be turned off, which I think is so silly. Like it's a great feature, reduces grinding. Like if that's people want so badly, they can put every Pokemon besides their main one in the box. Like that's your solution. Mm -hmm. And the people don't really want that. People don't really, you know, people are just frustrated. But the candy is (laughs) an awesome example where it's like you can use the candy if you want. You cannot use it if you don't want. It's like it's not automatically applied to everyone in your Pokemon and. Um, but it gives you that option. You can experiment with Pokemon you don't have and form Pokemon's a lot. What if I want to, you know, evolve some of those yampers and things that maybe I don't want to have in my team? I could, you know, check that one off the Pokedex quickly by using a resource that I'm rewarded for doing something maybe cool and high level and challenging. Especially again, if they can support this game as a service and give interesting things. I think the raids are a huge opportunity for this series. You know, I, I didn't play Pokemon Go all that much. Both Austin and Danny did a lot. And I think, um, and but Jordan, you and I actually, when they first came out, were playing a bunch and we're definitely into it. Yes. Yeah, and one yeah. of the things that I always liked, but never necessarily was a part of, but I liked the idea of, and that Austin really has played out, was that like community, like getting together to take, take on something. And when they introduced those raid battle concepts in the wild area, I thought that was them, you know, very much bridging, you know, that, mm-hmm. that successful approach from go into the game and i really can't wait to see how it plays out because i want to join i want to hop online with with friends and and get some sort of reward and if that's the way they're going to leak pokemon little by little uh into the you know the the decks for this world then that's that's great if even if it isn't i would like to still see it become an event you know um Pokemon, something they do is when a Pokemon's featured in Pokemon Go, it'll have an increased shiny chance. So what if it's even for two weeks? 
better chance of getting a shiny score bunny or a starter Pokemon you couldn't have picked up a second one of otherwise. Like, yeah. that would be an incentive. You know, that could be interesting. You still want, you know, everyone bringing their counters. They're like appropriate water types. Pokemon Go does a nice job too. These raided Pokemon will have a, some moves that will be like counters for the counters. So they'll, you know, if there's a score bunny up there as we get water, maybe it'll have like some type of thunder punch or something like yeah. that. So, um, mm. you know, it keeps it interesting and exciting. You don't know which move it's going to have, but um, there's a lot of opportunity there that they're so close to. I hope it isn't like I fear Matt, you expressed where each year is kind of a samey mm-hmm. thing. I hope they kind of push same it. old ranch furniture from um, oh, nooking oh, pins. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. As long as you play it with, KK uh dude ranch or whatever ranch so true. song he had. But yeah. I'm excited <laughs> to keep going. Uh I can wrap it to wrap this up. Jordan, um, you're the furthest in the story. Um you've been playing, you know, I think you've been playing a good amount of the game and had a lot of great insight. What is something you're like excited about in terms of like playing through the rest of the game? Ooh, um, I've been, I found the different towns that you go to to be really exciting. Um, so I'm excited to see like the design of the next yeah. couple of towns in particular, the, um, the, like, after you complete the first three gyms, you get to like, you open up kind of a, a new area of the wild area that you can go through that leads you to a super neat, um, kind of cityscape, uh, that seems to open up the world a bit. So I'm excited to see how they've developed yeah. those. And I'm excited to be able to go back to the wild area once I have the ability to catch Pokemon at higher levels. So that's like been such a sticking point for me. And I've seen so many cool Pokemon that I'm excited about. So every time that I like beat a gym, my plan is to go back to the wild area and engage there more. So yeah, that's um, awesome. excited to like spend a lot of time, like camping out, uh, Literally, um, in the wild area. <laughs> what um, color is your and tent? Also I think, IRL uh, and just playing Pokemon yeah. all the time. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Camp, both. Yeah. <laughs> real life camping camping with my pokemon that would be uh i'm sure those commercials are coming (laughs) it's my favorite all it is like (laughs) oh man yeah gotta go to rei but also Uh bring (laughs) exactly that'd be a real melding of worlds i really did i I wish link from breath of the wild had more of like a tent that you would set up like in like i love the like little fireplaces Mm. you'd like you could just make out of nowhere but i love if they just like had like a little tent or something that was more oh, can you imagine with like a little Sheikah emblem on it or something? Yeah. You could buy that tent in real life at REI. <laughs> wow. I'd be into that. Can you I would, imagine? I know several people that would purchase that. Yeah, I know three people on this very podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, this has been great. Um, Jordan, you've been fantastic to have on the show, and I can't wait to, to have you on for more episodes. Um, yes, bring me back for Animal ooh. Crossing. Viewers, uh, demand it. I want to be back. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, uh, comments, uh, no, thanks for having me on the pod, guys. This no, was that fun. was awesome. Um, yeah, Animal Crossing. Oh, that's going to be great. But um, we have lots of, of gyms and Pokemans to uh, capture and uh, train up until then. So thanks. This has been another Nintendo podcast, and we'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, everyone. Bye.